If you're finally ready to stop being stuck in slow progress in your career and accelerate your professional success, then the number one skill you must develop is your ability to be a public speaker. Because if you can show up in front of a group, whether it's a small group of a few people, a larger team, or an entire organization, if you can show up in front of an audience of people and you can speak with power and confidence and conviction, and you can deliver in a way that gets people to move, to be influenced, to take action or have a new belief or to follow you or to buy from you, whatever it is you're trying to do with your public speaking, if you can develop this skill, everything can change. And I'll prove it to you in a second with a quote from one of the wealthiest, most famous individuals on the face of the planet. But before we get there, I also want you to know that by the time we get done with this video, you're going to have answers to all the most common questions people have when it comes to public speaking. Like, what's the mindset that I need to have? How can I overcome the fear and boost my confidence so I can deliver with incredible conviction? How do I open? How do I even start a speech or presentation? What's the structure like? What are the steps in the process of giving a great presentation or speech? Number four, how do I deliver with power? How do I engage people? How do I make it exciting for the people that are listening to me? And finally, how do I close so that I close with influence? Because at the end of the day, the purpose of a powerful public speaker is to get people to take action, to make a decision, to believe something new, to move forward with them or with a mission or with a movement. And so I want to equip you with answers to all of these questions and you will get clear on all of these by the time this training is over. And I want to make this more valuable for you than any other course you may have paid hundreds or even thousands of dollars for in the past, because I'm going to cut the fluff. I'm going to give you everything that you need. And you're going to walk away from this video feeling confident and equipped to be great. The very next time you stand in front of a group to be a public speaker, to deliver with confidence. I'm JJ Peller, author of the book, Attract Your Potential, Become the Best Version of Yourself and Achieve Your Biggest Goals Faster. And that's exactly the purpose of my channel is to equip, empower, energize, and inspire you to tap into more of your greatest potential so you can do all of the things you're meant to do to achieve your biggest goals and dreams using your gifts and talents to truly make a meaningful, positive difference in the world for the people that you are called here to reach and serve with your gifts, talents, and skills. And by the way, the quote that I promised you that was going to come from one of the wealthiest, financially wealthiest, and most famous people in the world is from a guy you may have heard of named Warren Buffett. He's one of the richest people in the world, one of the most well-known, iconic personal brands in the world. And there's an article that's very recent, in fact, just a month ago, came out that says, Warren Buffett says this public speaking class changed his life. And then it goes on to quote him saying... This public speaking class certainly had the biggest impact in terms of my subsequent successes. And he did this. It was a Dale Carnegie course on public speaking that he took early in his career. And I've even heard him talk about it and say it was the best investment he's ever made. Not all of the businesses that he invested in, but investing in his public speaking abilities. And he went on to say a relatively modest improvement in your communication skills can make a major difference in your future earning power as well as in many other aspects of your life. Your ability to stand in front of another individual, whether it's a close family member or friend or a group in your community socially or within your company or in front of a stage or on a stage in front of a group of people that you're here to inspire and motivate and move with your message, your ability to do this can change everything. It could be your greatest investment in yourself. And that's why I want to really get you fired up about this topic and I'll dive in in a second to just get to the tactics of it, move forward with you and teach you everything you need to know about public speaking. But I need you to be completely thoroughly convinced of the power of developing the ability as a public speaker, because if you're not convinced, truly convinced that it will make a difference, then you're not going to have the energy, the excitement, the aliveness to actually execute. And do you realize the thing that holds more people back than anything is lack of execution, is lack of actually taking the information they know or learn and using it to make a positive difference in their life, to make positive changes in their life so they can then go out and serve the world even greater value. And I don't want that to be you. I don't want you to just listen to this and be like, well, that was kind of nice. He was kind of high energy. I feel excited for my day. I want you to be so thoroughly convinced of the power of public speaking that you then take this information, maybe even write down this information and start to use it in your own life personally and professionally, when you have an opportunity to stand in front of a small team or a large group or a huge audience so that you move them, you become a person of positive influence, you become someone that other people look up to and admire and respect, 
Because when you can stand in front of a group and speak with power, you're someone that other people will admire and respect. Why? Because it truly is one thing that most everyone across the globe are afraid to do. Most people are afraid to stand in front of a group and speak publicly. Do you know why? There's science to it. Our brains are wired to not want us to stand in front of a group and speak. There's a great book that I've referenced before called Social by Matthew Lieberman. And in that book, Matthew Lieberman shares that he and his team of researchers found that in the human brain, the part of our brain that activates when we're actually physically hit or hurt, that same part of our brain activates when we experience social rejection, which some people might call embarrassment. And most people don't want to stand in front of people, whether it's one person or thousands of people, and speak because they feel like they might be embarrassed. And our brains want to protect us from social rejection to the point the same part of your brain will activate when you feel socially rejected as when you feel physical pain. I just started listening to a podcast by Ed Milet where he interviews one of the greatest UFC fighters on the face of the planet right now, Michael Chandler. And he was talking about how there's this metaphor in life where it's like he literally gets in a ring and he's scheduled, it looks like, in 2024 to be fighting Conor McGregor for one of the biggest fights the world has ever seen um, in the UFC. But he says, you know, I get in the ring and people expect me to get hit and I expect to get hit. I expect to get punched in the face and some, some of the punches that my opponent is going to throw at me, they're going to catch, they're going to hit but I got to still be able to stay in there and fight. And I expect it. And other people expect it when they watch me. But when we are in regular real life, this is what he was saying, but we're in regular real life, whether it's business or relationships or a career in some capacity, when we get punched in the face metaphorically, or we fall down or we fail, or we're seen as getting hit hard by life, we feel embarrassed. We don't want other people to see us getting punched in the face by life because we feel like we're not supposed to. But if we actually realize what happens in the octagon with the greatest, most skilled fighters on the face of the planet, they expect that they could get hit in the midst of a fight. And they don't get embarrassed by other people, by the people that are watching. Like, oh, he says, I don't have time to think about what other people think when I get punched in the face. I got to just keep hammering forward, moving forward to win the fight, to be victorious. But most people don't want to stand in front of people on a stage. And most people have a fear right here, fear, which I've heard it called F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. By the way, it's a perception. I'll get into that in one second. But most people don't want to stand on stage, and maybe this is you. You don't want to stand in front of a group because you don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to be socially rejected. You're like, well, what if I say something wrong, or I'm not as good, or I'm not this, or I'm not that, or they think I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about? What if I don't actually move them, or what if they're bored? We have all of these negative thoughts going through our heads, and it holds us back from delivering our true, authentic value to the world. And friend, if there's one thing I know about you, if you're watching this video, you are someone who genuinely believes that you have something inside of you to share. You have a message, you have knowledge, you have expertise. Whether you're sharing it on video, you're sharing it in the boardroom, or sharing it with your team, or you're sharing it on Zoom, or you're actually sharing it on stage in front of a group, you have a gift. Whether it's your knowledge, your information, your perspective, your experience, you have a gift. You have things you're here to share, and I want you to be feel fully equipped and convicted that you are here to share that message. And so I wanted to share that with you from Warren Buffett because he literally talks about how the greatest investment he made was in his ability to do public speaking. Was that a couple hundred dollars or hundred dollars in that public speaking course decades ago when it was probably the value of that today is probably thousands of dollars, but he did it. And I'm giving you this completely free right here on YouTube. And uh, I want to get into this because there's something about mindset that most people also don't realize. And it's that they not only have fear that they have to overcome, which by the way, hopefully you're getting this. Like if you feel fear in front of a group socially, whether you're networking or you're talking to a stranger or you're even talking to people, you know, we humans are wired to feel the pain of social rejection. So if you have fear of standing in front of a group, first of all, you just have to understand that's how you're wired. Because if you can actually understand this is how the human brain is wired, you can now say, okay, this is not me being unusual or weird or I'm like fearful unlike everybody else. Other people are not fearful. Our brains are wired to protect us from social rejection, from the pain of embarrassment. But if you can realize, just like Michael Chandler does when he gets in the ring, that getting punched in the face 
socially, uh, metaphorically socially, it's part of the game. We're going to fall. We're going to fail. We're going to stand in front of a group. We're going to give a presentation and we're going to mess up. We're going to miss a word. We're going to stutter. We're going to be like, what was I going to say? It's all part of the journey of mastering your ability to be a great public speaker. And by the way, it's like anything else. The first time Michael Chandler stepped in the ring, I'm just referencing him because I just listened to him on a, the Ed My Lab podcast, which was awesome. But he's like, man, when he was 18 and he was a wrestler and he was 20-something, he was just getting into fighting and he was going, to, he didn't actually get into the UFC, my understanding. He didn't get his UFC card until he was 34 years old. He fought for like 28 years or something like that, or 20 plus years. He was training in different hand-to-hand -hand combat, whether it's wrestling or MMA, all these things, until he got to the point where he was good enough to do it. We just have to understand that we've got to develop this as a skill like anything else. And if it takes you the next decade to get great at public speaking, is it worth it? I don't actually think it's going to take you that long. I think even after watching this video, your confidence is going to go from, write down, what is your confidence right now? Zero to 10, think it in your head or write it down if you're in a position to, write it down. Zero to 10, 10 is like I'm completely confident as a public speaker. Zero is like I have no confidence as a public speaker. Where are you on a scale of zero to 10 right now? And I can virtually promise you, if you actually take what I'm going to share with you in this video and use it, you can increase at least one notch, one number up, increase your confidence as a public speaker. And the more you do it, the more reps you get, the more times you review this and actually implement it and execute it, the better and better you're going to get. Every time you do a rep, you're going to get better. And you got to have this knowledge and understanding and belief. That's part of the mindset, which is I'm not going to be very good when I start at public speaking. Oh my goodness, if I could show you a clip, I'm sure maybe I have it saved somewhere. The very first, not the very first, but the very, um, an early public speech I gave was in my rhetoric class, or my speech class in college. It was just a 100 level class, very entry level. And I gave a speech and, oh, I want to make sure I make this note to tell you X. Okay, make a note to remind myself to tell you this as we get to section three. So I was in front of a group. I watched the video. We had to record it so we can watch ourselves. Oh my goodness, I was terrible. I wanted to go to sleep listening to myself. I wanted to shut it off. I wanted to break the CD. Yes, it was a CD that was recorded on at the time. I wanted to break it in half, smash it, and let no one ever view that thing again. I mean, it was bad. I was monotone, I had no energy, I was looking down most of the time. It was terrible. And now I've gotten to the point where I've, I have flown around the country to speak at conferences and to corporations, to small management teams and to large entire audiences at conferences. From speaking to, for free to a bunch of different groups to getting paid thousands of dollars to fly across the country and speak to leadership teams. And I tell you this not to brag because there's so many people that are so much further ahead on, than I am on this journey of public speaking, but I tell you this because I've done it. I've gone from, I can barely get out a presentation in my speech 101 class to having people say, yeah, we'll pay you thousands of dollars to come and speak. We'll fly you across the country to come and speak. So I need you to know that it is possible for you to go from wherever you are on the scale of zero to 10 in terms of your confidence and on the scale of zero to 10 in terms of your actual skills and abilities in public speaking to a much higher level over time when you get the reps, when you commit yourself to being great at this craft. And it is a craft. And the greatest leaders and CEOs and entrepreneurs and movement makers on the face of the planet in the history of the world have developed an ability to stand in front of a group, whether it's of small people or an entire audience of hundreds or even thousands of people and move them emotionally and intellectually to believe something or to take an action or to join a movement. And you can too. So you've got to have this belief that to over, I can overcome the fear by understanding that it's a thing that exists in my brain. And then on top of that, I have to understand that it's going to take reps to get better. Because if you think you're either good or you're not, and, and you either have the skill or you don't, you're not going to do the reps that it requires to get better. And the other thing I want to say about boosting confidence, like, would you like to have a boost in your confidence? Whatever you said, zero to 10, wherever you are, self-assessed, obviously, but wherever you are on that scale, would you like to go up a notch or two or five? Would that be helpful? Would you like to have greater confidence? Great. Well, answer this question in your head or actually write it down or speak it aloud as you're watching this video. What's the reason you don't have greater confidence than you have right now? Tell me. So very often I hear people will say, well, I don't have the experience or I'm new 
or I don't have the success, or I've failed in the past. And they point to things in their past. Or they say, you know, I just don't know if I can perform at that level, or I don't know if I can get those results. And they look to the future. They focus on the future. They say, well, I don't know if I can achieve at that level, so I don't have the confidence. But if you, have you defined confidence? I did an entire video on it. You should go check it out. Look over on my channel. An entire video on how to have unstoppable confidence. But let me give you a snippet of it right here because it's vital for your ability to deliver powerfully in public speaking. Have you ever defined confidence? And if your excuse or reason for not having more confidence is based on looking at the past and not having experience or not having the successes or having too many failures or falling short too many times or looking to the future and thinking, well, I don't know if I can perform at that level, then I know for certain you have not defined confidence. Let me define it for you because if you can define a word, you can better understand it. If you better understand it, you can leverage it more than you ever have before. Way too many people think they know what words mean and they just don't. I did an experiment one time with, uh, I did it several times when I was speaking at different places with different groups and I asked the group, I said, when I say the word snow, what do you think of? Let, respond to me. When I ask the word, when I say the word snow, what do you think of specifically? What comes to your mind? So I've had everything from, oh, joyful, because people think of like the Christmas season or the winter season, like joyful, fun, because they go skiing or it's cozy and they drink in their coffee or their hot chocolate or whatever. And they feel cozy. They feel fun. It's, it's nice. Some people, say, some people will say like cozy, warm, like warm, snow, warm. Okay, because it's cozy. And then some people, I've had one guy say, hell. I was like, wow, you think of like deteriorating forever. And uh, yeah, that's, that's wild. Wildly different experiences from one word. And so as you can see, none of these people actually define snow. They have their own interpretation. But if you define snow, then we all get on the same page with what it actually means. And it's a slight tangential example, but the reality is, just like confidence, if I ask you what does confidence mean, where does it come from, how do we develop it, you'd be like, you'd give me your perspective. Other people give me their opinion. And no one comes back to what the actual definition is. So let me give it to you because this will help you. And I'm taking this from Miriam Webster. Faith, listen to this, faith or belief that one will act in a proper, in a right, proper, or effective way. Right will act. I'm going to write this out because I need to point a few things out to you. Will act in a right, proper, or effective, I'll just do shorten it, way. That's the definition of confidence. Faith or belief that one will act in a right, proper, or effective way. Here's why it's vital to define this. It says, will act. Where in this definition that I read to you or that I've noted, where does it talk about your past? Where does it talk about, oh, you've got to have certain successes in your past. You've got to have a certain number of years of experience or you can't have failed too many times. Or where in this does it talk about the results you must produce? Nowhere. And yet this is how most people define for themselves the level of confidence they have. But if you actually define it as will act in a right, proper, or effective way, you can have confidence right now in anything you do. Because all you have to know is that you will act in the right, proper, or effective way. Now you might say, well, JJ, effective is up for interpretation because like, what if I don't think I'm going to act in an effective way? My point to you is you can act as effectively as possible in anything that you do. Whether you're a beginner just getting started or you've been doing it for decades, you can act in a right, proper, or effective way right now. And if your confidence is just based on I'm going to show up and I'm going to give it my best and see where the chips fall, then you can have greater confidence just by choosing to look at the actual definition of confidence. You can and will have more confidence confidence. I promise you because you'll stop focusing on the past. You'll stop focusing on what results you may or may not achieve and you'll focus on acting in a right, proper, or effective way. And so you have to have the mindset. I'm spending so much time initially on the mindset because if you don't have the mindset, then you cannot achieve at your highest levels as a public speaker. It is the foundation of everything. One of my favorite Yogi Berra quotes, the great Yogi Berra-isms as, as they call them, is uh, success in baseball is 80% mental and the other half is physical. Get it? It's a joke. But you've likely heard that success is 80% in sports. I heard it all the time growing up. Success in sports is 
80% mindset and 20% physical. It's 80% your mental game and it's 20% your actual physical abilities. But if you talk to people who are really successful in business, most of them will say success in business is like a 99.9% mindset and mental and psychology. And it's only a tiny fraction of your ability to actually do the thing. Because your ability to do the thing will develop if you have the right mindset. That's the key. So that's why I'm spending time here. I want you to make sure you can know that you can overcome the fear once you know what it means and where it comes from. And you can boost your confidence once you define it. And once you get the reps, you will start increasing your confidence so that you can become a powerful public speaker. So we checked that box. Box number one, mindset's done. Let's move on to number two. Uh, these will go a little bit quicker because I want to, again, lay the foundation with mindset. But we'll keep moving forward a little bit faster through these. So the opening, how most people want to know, like, how do I even open? And I've got a contrarian view on this because I want to make sure you open in a really powerful way. And you might say, well, JJ, I don't feel, I don't feel really powerful. Back to mindset number one, like you are a powerful persuader. You are a powerful public speaker. Just like Muhammad Ali would say, I am the greatest before he was ever the greatest. I believe that whatever it is we're trying to be the best at for ourselves. Like you might not say I want to be the best public speaker in the world, but you might say I want to be really great as a public speaker because I want to deliver with passion and power and enthusiasm to move people, to influence people, to have people look to me as a leader and a person they respect and admire and want to follow. And if that's the case, you've got to start telling yourself you are a powerful public speaker. You are a powerful public public speaker and grain it into your mind. Now, once you know this and you believe it, how do you start strong? So here's why I have a contrarian view because I very often have heard from people, they're like, well, you've got to, and I've heard this from really powerful speakers. So I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just not what I agree with. They'll say, you have to start with a story. I was at this event one time and like one of the main stage speakers was like, you start with a story. Well, he didn't even say that. He actually started with a story. He just jumped right in the first words out of his mouth were the start of a story that he was sharing with everybody. And I've heard others profess and say, you got to start with a story. Just immediately jump in with a story because that grabs attention, that gets people's hearts. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, does that work? Yes, for sure. Because there are a lot of really powerful public speakers that do that. I'm not saying it's wrong. If that's your personality, great. But there is another way. And the other way is the way I do it, which is I want to connect with the audience as friends. John Maxwell, the great John C. Maxwell, talks about this in his book, The 16 Laws of Communication. He says, you don't want fans, you want friends. And I 100% agree with him. I don't want people to feel like, well, he's a great public speaker. I want people to feel like I can talk with JJ. I can have a conversation with JJ. I feel like I'm right there with him. Like, I hope even in this video, you feel like you're right in the room with me as I'm speaking this and recording it. And when I'm on stage, when I'm in front of a group, I want people to feel like, they can be friends with me. We're having co almost like we're having coffee together or a tea or just sitting down and hanging out. And so my question, if that's if you want people to feel like they're your friends when you're speaking to them, because by the way, who do we have the most influence with in our lives? Usually our friends. If they're good enough friends, they'll they'll be influenced by us in a positive way for positive good things. For sure. And likewise, we're influenced by our friends, they're influenced by us because we just have such connection, trust and rapport. So that's why my goal is always immediately get people to feel like I want to be friends with this guy as quickly as possible. And I don't know about you, but whenever I'm trying to make friends, I don't just start walking up to someone random and start telling a story. Once upon a time, blah, 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 blah. You want to be my friend? No. I walk up to someone. Hey, what's up? How are you? How you feeling? How's your day going? What's happening? Like I usually literally will start by just saying, what's up, everyone? How's everybody feeling? How's everybody doing? Good? Awesome. Like, I want to immediately connect with people, and that's what I say to friends. So I'm not the person that says, immediately start with a story. I want to build rapport and trust, and I do that by acting as if these people that I'm speaking to are my friends, even if it's a professional setting. I spoke to nearly 400 people recently on a, uh, a Zoom call for work, and my first thing was, how's everybody feeling? Excited to be here with you. I want people to feel my excitement. And maybe yours isn't excitement. Maybe it's something else. Maybe you say, I'm really grateful to be with all of you. This is so fun for me. I'm really excited for our time together. Like, get people feeling good about listening to you. Build that trust, that rapport, that connection instantly. I don't think you do that by starting with a story. I think you do that by just acting like they're your friends. Hey, how are you? 
How's everybody feeling? Like this is a totally different way than some of the best um, teachers, but the best teachers are not always the best presenters or the most skilled. I'm not saying they aren't skilled, but we also have to understand that there's more than one way to do something. And if your goal is to build trust, rapport, connection as quickly as possible, then your goal should be to as quickly as possible get people to feel like they're your friend. And if you want that to happen, I suggest you don't just jump into a story, but you start by saying things like, how's everybody feeling? How you doing? I'm so excited to be here with you. Our time together is going to be so fun. I've been looking forward to this. And then you get buy-in. You sell people. I dropped my pen markers. Let me pick that up. And look, even the failure sometimes build trust and rapport. Like you mess up, you th- something falls down. You build trust and rapport because you seem like a human. <laughs> you seem fallible. You seem like you can mess up just like other humans do. And that builds trust and rapport as well. I didn't do it on purpose, I promise, but hopefully it made you feel a little bit more connected to me for the fact that it happened. But let's keep this in mind. You also want people to be excited about what you're about to deliver. Uh, we're going to, yeah, so this is still part of the opening because the other part of the opening is not just to get people to feel like they're your friend and they want to listen, but they have to know there's a big payoff. Either you're going to completely and totally remove some pain they have by whatever you're presenting, or you're going to give them total pleasure and excitement and achievement by delivering whatever it is you deliver for them. But either way, they have to know that by the end of your time together, there will be a major payoff for them. And so that's why I spent significant time on the front end getting you hopefully excited about being a powerful public speaker and developing the skill and giving you the quote from one of the richest, most famous people on the face of the planet, Warren Buffett. Because if you're like, well, if Warren wants to be a great public speaker and he developed that skill and he made that investment, maybe it's good for me too. I want you to be so thoroughly convinced that this is worth your while to listen, that you actually listen, that you actually pay attention. Because if you start your speech and people feel like you're their friend, but they don't feel like they're going to get a payoff by the end of your time together, they ain't going to tune in for the whole thing. And if you actually want to transform someone's life, then you've got to get them to tune in to the entire thing. And you set the foundation with how you show up. I had a friend at the gym one time. I've been going there a handful of months. And and he looked at me as I walked in and he said, you walk in with authority. Just like, blank stare right at me. Blank stare, is that the right way to say it? Just like dead stare right at me. You walk in with authority. And the guy right next to me was like, yeah, you do. And I said, thank you. And I went back to the story of like, walk in like you own the place. When you get on the stage, when you get in front of a group, you must walk in with authority. You must walk in with the energy and the attitude that you are here to change their lives, that you know what you're about to share with them could change everything for them. That's my mindset getting on videos. That's my mindset speaking to two people or one person or a whole group of people, whether virtually or in person. Because if you're not thoroughly convinced, then you're not going to show up with that authority. People pay attention to people who have an aura of authority. And if you can show up with an aura of authority, people will listen. You will command attention. And what that requires is that you demand that people pay attention. And I don't mean you like you yell at people like, hey, you need to pay attention. But the way you show up, the energy you exude says, I command your attention. And if that's your mindset, that's your attitude, and you have that level of confidence and conviction, then it will come through. And you will command attention. You will be seen as a person with authority, but you got to show up that way. And so that's how you need to start. That's how you need to open. That's my contrarian view. We checked that box. Now we're going to move into the structure. Because people will always ask like, okay, well, you know, I heard the old like, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, then tell them what you told them. I'm not saying that's wrong. But more specifically, I want to give you an idea for like, how do you even move through this speech or presentation? And the very simple core fundamental thing I'll say is you got to know that you're going to convince them on the front end that they're going to get a big payoff. And then you got to know what are the major points that I'm going to share with them along the way. And by the way, my opinion is you should have one major, central, big idea, whatever you want to call it. It's like one big idea. You've got one, one big idea that everything you speak to works to support. Because if everything you share, and by the way, this is the structure then, you've got one idea, this is the payoff, this is what people will get, this is what you're convincing them of, and that these are all of the supporting elements. It's the stories, it's the examples, it's the anecdotes, it's the case studies, it's the insights, it's the stats, it's the information, it's your experience. All of these things, let's just call them tables, uh, legs to the table, 
to support your one big idea. All of those things will support the big idea. And the stronger you can build this foundation, the more likely it is people will buy your big idea. And so your structure is simple. I'm going to convince them that this thing can change their life or this is the right next step or this is the right choice or decision for the board or for the team or for whatever or for the individuals here. This one thing is the best idea. It's what you need. It's what I'm going to deliver you. And then the structure, the rest of it, the track to run on is all of the major points or ideas that you're going to share. I believe you should have like three, maybe four major sections or points that are stabilizing this one main point. Because if you go on and on and on and on and on, could you say like, here's the top 10 things? Sure. But then it just becomes informational instead of transformational. And as, um, what's his name? Donald Miller says in his book, Building a Story Brand, he says, if you confuse, you lose. If you confuse, you lose. And he's actually the one I heard, uh, what did he call it? Like a, a central... Uh, controlling idea. I think he called it the controlling idea. Controlling idea, same thing as the big idea, the major, major takeaway. And so if you confuse, you lose. That's why I say three, maybe four main points at most. And then within those major points, you can have other anecdotes and stories and examples and statistics. But like, it's got to be like, boom, 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 punch, one, two, three. Like those are the three hits. They're the major things to support this. And there could be other information, ideas, or experiences within that. Now, Here's the thing I wrote down earlier that I wanted to highlight that I learned in that college speech class that I told you I bombed, fell flat on my face. Um, the thing I learned was something called extemporaneous speaking. Have you ever heard of it? If, whether you have or haven't, let me refresh you on what it is. Um, ex a lot of people, at least very early on when I gave speeches in different capacities, I was like, okay, I'm going to write, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type it out, I'm going to read it, I'm going to read it word for word. And that's how I did some speeches early on, like in middle school, elementary school, um, when I gave speeches for different things, whether it was in church or in school, I, like print, print it out, type it, print it out, read it. But then I learned this life-changing thing called extemporaneous speaking, which is know your information so well. Know your opening, know your closing, which we'll get into in a second. Know the major points, know the major stories, and then just speak from bullet points. If I can just have like a sentence or a few words that sparks me to know what the next thing is I'm going to move into... I am significantly more powerful as a communicator. And even in this article that I read to you where Warren Buffett talks about the way he speaks and presents, he talks about extemporaneous speaking. I don't think he calls it that, but he just says, like, just have bullet points. He's like, I never script it out fully because then it loses, I think he says in the, uh, the quote, something like, it loses my authenticity and the spark that comes from speaking off the cuff, if you will, from speaking extemporaneously, as I'll use in this case, which is just like, hey, I don't have it scripted out, but I know the major points, I know the outline, I know the opening, I know the stories, and I just go. It gives you tremendous flexibility as a speaker, and flexibility as a speaker is power. When you can be flexible as a speaker, you can be completely powerful as a speaker. So you, there's your track to run on. Know your one major point that you want to convince people of, no, your, that's your controlling idea, as Donald Miller calls it, your controlling idea. And then you've got to have three major sections. And then within those major sections, you can have stories, you can have anecdotes. And I wouldn't have more than like one to three is a good number for each of those. Quick stories, quick examples, quick bullet point. I also heard um, Les Brown's the, the Motivator. He's a great motivational speaker. He's been around for decades doing work as a motivational speaker. And he said, never tell a story without making a point. And never make a point without telling a story. So stories are vitally important outside the scope of this. Um, but maybe a future video I'll talk more about storytelling and how to get great at that. Awesome. Check the box at number three. Let's move to number four, the delivery. So I want you to speak with power. Again, I did a full video on this that you can go and reference because it goes way more in depth than I will right here. But here's why the delivery is important. People will judge you on your delivery. Have you ever heard it said it's not what you said it's how you said it. You ever run into that one? I certainly have. And so what I know for certain is that what we say, the words are not as important, the stories we tell are not as important as how we say it. With the emotion, with the energy, with the strength, with the conviction, with the sense of authority that we deliver when we're speaking. So again, I shared this in the video, but I'm going to give you a quick rundown. So there's a study done in the 1960s by Dr. Morabian at UCLA, and they were trying to find out 
there's different components of communicating feelings from one person to another, and they want to know what weighting does each component have in someone's ability to communicate feelings to another person. So you've got two people here. That's really bad stick figures. But this person, person A, wants to communicate feelings to person B. There are three major components that go into it. Number one, words. Number two, tonality. Number three, facial expressions is what they did in the study. Some people would call it physiology, so more than just your face, but also your body language, which I think falls in there. But those are the three components. And then they said in the study in UCLA, what weighting, meaning what amount of influence does each component have? They found that words have 7% influence. Tonality has 38% influence. And your facial expressions and physiology have 55% influence. So when I say it's not what you say, it's how you say it, it's not just about the words. That's only 7%. 93%, 93% of your ability to communicate feelings to another person or group of people comes from your tonality, your vocal expressions, your, your volume, your intensity, your loudness, your softness, the pacing, all these different qualities of your tone of voice are 38%. And your facial expressions are 55%. So if you're doing the math at home, that's a whole 93%. 93% has nothing to do with the words. And by the way, some people will say, well, that's just about communicating feelings. And my point is, what else are you trying to do when you're speaking to a group? You want to give them information, but information is never enough. You must give them emotion. You must give them the feeling that is possible for them, that they can take the action or make the decision, and it will change their lives. Like I said at the beginning, you want people to know they're going to move away from pain and towards pleasure. That's a very simple pain pleasure principle. But if you think about it, that's what feelings are. Do people believe when you speak, do people believe that they're going to have good feelings if they take action on what you say? Do you make them feel good? Do you give them a sense of excitement and passion and aliveness? Or do you give them pain through the way you communicate with your tonality and your facial expressions? And by the way, how many people never use their face to communicate anything other than I'm bored and I don't care? I'm not bored and I do care. And I love to help people feel energized and excited and enthusiastic. And so I use my face as much as possible to be as effective as possible. Sometimes maybe a little overboard, but I'd rather be overboard than never use it at all if I had to err on one side or the other. And so your delivery to speak with power, you got to be so convinced of what it is that you're sharing that it comes through you. Like, talk about stuff that you're fired up about. That's why it's easy for me to get fired up on these videos when I speak to a group and I'm talking about something that I'm already passionate about because it comes through me. It's not just information for me. I feel it. I feel it. And because I feel it, I can send it to you. I've heard, I think it was Zig Ziglar said, sales is simply a transference of confidence. Well, I believe persuasion and being a powerful public speaker is simply the transference of the feelings people need to feel uplifted, excited, empowered, and equipped to take actions that will change their lives, that will improve their lives, that will get them the results they're looking for. And so you've got to have that level of conviction and energy and enthusiasm and passion if you're going to share it with someone. Like if you don't have a thing... If I don't have copies of my book, I can't give you copies of my book. If I, don't have some, if I don't have markers, I can't give you markers. If you don't have passion, enthusiasm, and a sense of aliveness for the things you're talking about, then you can't give those feelings to the people that you're speaking to. And they need those feelings for your message, your public speaking to really hit and move them and influence them. Because again, it's never about the information. The information is never enough. It's about them taking action. And we don't take action unless we feel something come alive inside of us. A spark that gets us to say, I want that. I want to go after that. I want to get away from that pain. I want to move towards that exciting future. To feel a sense of hope that more is possible. But if you don't have hope that more is possible for the people you're speaking to, they will not feel from your public speaking that they can have hope that more is possible. So you've got to build it in yourself. And this comes down to self-talk. Back to the mindset. I told you, mindset was all of it. It's the foundation. And it goes through everything. And in a second, I'm going to tell you how to finish strong, how to close strong with influence. But you've got to deliver the entire time. 
with influence. So you've got to be influenced. If you want to convince people, you want to influence people, you must be convinced. You must be influenced. You must be persuaded if you want to persuade people. If you want to move people emotionally, you must be moved emotionally. And you must speak with that emotion. It comes with practice. So now this becomes head knowledge for you. But you got to do it. you got to get out there in one quick and easy way to get really great at embodying this and using it is to watch people that speak with passion, power, enthusiasm, and just modeling what they do. That's what I've, excuse me, done for a long time. I study people that I observe to be excellent public speakers. And I just take from them like, oh, I want to do that, I want to do that. And then I do it, and then it becomes my own. I do it enough times that it becomes who I am. It becomes how I show up. It becomes how I speak, how I deliver. And the same will happen for you. And so I want to encourage you that the more you practice delivering with power, even at first, like the first time you do it, like you get really excited or like you deliver with emotion, then you don't the rest of the time. It's like, okay, you did it once. Now come back to it and do it again and again and again. Observe what you did. Get the feedback. Assess, analyze, review, and then move forward. Get better at it. Keep watching people that you view as great speakers. Keep watching them. Keep studying them. And the more your brain sees people speaking with power and moving people, with enthusiasm, with energy, the more you're going to develop it for yourself because your brain will take it on. The last thing I'll say in here is you got to engage. So one of the most important things you can do throughout is getting responses. How do you feel about that? What are your thoughts? Zero to 10. Where are you on a scale of zero to 10? Tell me. Get answers from the audience. Like the more you can ask questions and get responses in real time or have conversations with people in the audience, the more you're going to get people engaged. And like literally, if you just engage with one person, other people feel it. Because like, oh, this speaker is going to engage with us. Oh, man, this, oh, there's someone else speaking. And it grabs their attention in a different kind of way. So if you really want to engage everybody, you got to start engaging at least one person. Ask questions. Ask for feedback. Ask people to raise their hands. It's really simple. It's really simple. And if you have specific questions about this stuff, anything I've shared so far before I get into this one, Um, make sure you drop comments. Let me know your questions in the comments of this video. Let me know what resonates most. Let me know what doesn't make sense so I can come back and make other follow-up videos to truly help you with this. Um, And before I get into the last one, I will say you can't, if you're like, man, this is awesome. I really want one-on-one coaching with you, JJ. There's a link in the description of this uh, video and you can sign up to get a one-on-one coaching session with me. Just click that link, sign up. And when you sign up, it'll immediately charge your card that you use to sign up. So to be able to sign up, you got to put a card information in so you will be charged and we'll get together and I will help you work through this stuff and your ability to be a powerful public speaker. If there's one tiny component you want to work on or you want to talk about all of it, we can get in all that stuff. And likewise, if you are looking for a dynamic, powerful, high energy, engaging public speaker for your next corporate event or conference, please email me at connect at jjpeller.com. I'd love to have a conversation to see if the way I deliver and the stuff I talk about would really resonate and be beneficial and hugely valuable for you and your team or your company or your conference attendees. So reach out. Let me know if you want to have that conversation. I'd love to dive in and see if I can help you and support you in that way. Also, you can listen to the full audio version of my book over on my podcast or even here on my YouTube channel. You can listen to the entire thing completely free. But if you want a physical copy, go over to Amazon and uh, you can buy it right now. At least the way I've got it priced is less than seven bucks. Less than seven bucks. Do you hear me say that? Less than $7. You can get a full physical paper copy. Uh, at least that's what I listed it at. I guess Amazon can do whatever they want with the pricing, but that's what I had it listed at. So if you're over there, you can get it for less than seven bucks, I believe. Right now, let's get into the final one, the, the close. We checked the box on number four. Let's get into the close. Finish with influence. Like, look, you got to start with power you got to grab attention. You got to get people to know you are here to deliver for them and you are commanding attention. You got to deliver throughout. Like, you actually have to have content that supports people and helps people. You got to be able to speak in a way that delivers with power, that gets people to engage. They feel excited. But man, this close is all important. You got to be able to finish with influence. You've got to be able to move people. Like whatever amount of energy and enthusiasm and feeling and emotion you've had throughout this, double it. When you go to close, you double it. You bring even more passion and enthusiasm. You tell people that it's possible for them, that the next steps could change our lives, could change the company, could move us forward even faster. I mean, you certainly have to actually believe it. Don't just say it as fluff. Like if you actually are convinced of this stuff, let people know with the way you close. And what is your call to action? Is it for the boardroom to take 
a certain action step or to make a certain decision? Is it for the leadership team you're speaking to to make a decision? Is it for your team to get on board with a movement or a mission or an idea? Is it for your audience at the conference to get your book and learn from you or, or to follow you online or to take an action that changes their lives or to implement a new habit or to make a new decision in life or to turn their lives around? Like what is the call to action? What is the call to action? Now, you certainly can give people options. You can say, hey, if you're just like dipping your toe and do this, if you really want to get after it, you can do this. Like I said, you can go get my book completely free on YouTube or my podcast and listen to the audiobook and get the paperback for seven bucks. Or you can hire me to come speak to your team, group, organization. Or you can get a one-on-one coaching. Like there are different ways you can, you can move forward from this video depending on the level of value you got and what you want to do moving forward. There are options, but I know for certain for my my ability to continue serving you beyond this video, certainly subscribe and come back for more videos. And also, there's these other ways you can engage with me. These other higher value ways where I can go deeper with you. Whether it's through you listening to my book or having me come speak or doing a one-on-one coaching session, like we can go deeper. I can help you even more. Same thing happens at the end of your speech or presentation, whether it's to a few people or to an entire group or organization. Know your call to action. Be completely convinced of your call to action and make it completely clear. Make it completely clear. Because as Donald Miller says, when you confuse, you lose. Make it clear and help people to know that when they take this action, their entire life can change. They can catalyze movement in a direction that they've never experienced before. Their life can get better. Their business can get better. Whatever it is you're trying to work to move people to do, it can can happen for them. They can do it. People need to be convinced, not only that it will benefit them, but that they can do it. Friend, I know for certain that you can become a powerful public speaker. I know that by developing this skill we've just been talking about for 45, 50 minutes, you can accelerate your career. Because as I said at the beginning, so many people are terrified of speaking to a group that they never do it, so they never become great at it. But you, friend, if you break through the fear, if you boost your confidence, if you just take the baby step and you start to speak in front of a small group and then a bigger group and you do it again and again and again, and you can, and if you do that, you will develop this skill that can change the entire trajectory, the entire trajectory of your career and therefore your life. You can become a person of powerful, profound influence at your company, for your family, in your community, in the work that you do. Friend, I know that you're meant to do something significant and special with your life. I know that you can do something special and developing this skill will help you to get there faster and bigger when you get there. Friend, I want to encourage you to refuse to settle for anything less than your greatest potential because you're here to do something special. You are gifted with talents and skills that you're here to use to serve other people. And whatever you're going after, I know for certain that the people that do the biggest things in this world are the people that refuse to quit, that never stop, that just keep going through all the struggle, the challenge, the obstacles, the adversities. They just don't quit. They refuse to settle. They keep moving forward. And great things happen for them. Friend, if you're looking for a breakthrough in your life, it can happen if you keep believing, you keep dreaming, you keep staying positive, you keep feeding your mind with encouraging videos like this that equip you with real skills that you can take and use in your life. Friend, whatever you're going after, refuse to settle for anything less than your greatest potential. Just keep going. Breakthrough's near. I'll see you in the next one.